Welcome to my channel, exploring old technologies and seeding new ideas. Let's begin. Part one of this video series showed that the PHEV watchdog application draws considerable information from the vehicle's CAN bus to present seven unique smartphone screens of data as you drive. This part two segment aims to demonstrate how uploading vehicle data to the companion watchdog website might better help you manage your drive battery investment. To accomplish this, I will share six years of experience as a premium member using the watchdog system in my 2018 PHEV. As a reminder, you must first register with the website as you complete the settings portion of your smartphone app. Remember, I am not paid in any way by the PHEV watchdog creators and my only intention is to share my understanding of how the watchdog system relates to getting the best out of your PHEV. Not immediately upgrading from the free version of the watchdog application results in loss of valuable tracking history. I missed recording the actual delivered state of health for my PHEV because I delayed four months. More importantly, I can only guess at what the battery decline curve looked like from the expected 38 amp hour start. Everyone with a smartphone realizes that lithium batteries die, and electrified vehicles have not escaped this fate. This decline is estimated by a green line in the opening graphic that the watchdog presents. To get more insight on how long electric car batteries last, check out the article by Charlie Argue listed below. Watchdog's website's opening chart helps us appreciate the existence of battery state of health degradation as a normal occurrence. There we see our data alongside a large community of similar users. So we need to learn how to best manage our investment in expensive batteries, aided by any tools we can find. In part one of the series, we observed important terms addressed in the 25 most asked questions, including state of health, state of charge, and battery management unit, which we should understand more before getting too deep into this topic. As a helpful analogy, Consider management of a simplified garden watering conservation system. Imagine a rain barrel as a surrogate lithium battery and the amount of water in the barrel being analogous to the charge. Also consider our home charging system being the city water supply and in frequent rain being the regenerative braking system. In this scenario, as managers of this conservation system, we represent the Battery Management Unit, or the BMU for short. With this in mind, we have some important tasks. Number one, do not overfill or charge the system too much or bad things happen. In the case of a lithium battery, instead of water overflow, it could actually catch fire, as electric skateboard owners discovered in 2001-2002. Historical records show that Mitsubishi learned this lesson as well. With a few PHEV fires in the early 2013 development period. As a precaution, new PHEVs only charge to about 95% of the battery's rating. For my PHEV Outlander, this means that the BMU will only allow 38 amp hours of the 40 amp hour rating to be added to the battery. When measured, this maximum is called the state of health, or SOH, for the battery. Since it changes with aging, it's also something we have to be concerned with. As a practical result of this initial restriction, the maximum I could have ever gotten from the advertised 12 kilowatts by Mitsubishi was 11.4 kilowatts from my battery. In contrast, battery state of charge, SOC, is the remaining level available for the vehicle to do its work and analogous to the water level in the barrel. The charge you have to water the lawn or roll the vehicle down the road is limited by another force control by the BMU. The PHEV needs a certain amount of capacity to run the internal workings of the drive system. So a reserve has been set up for the BMU to enforce which lies below the point where your dashboard readout says zero charge and the gas motor cuts in. At about 20% of the state of charge, this brought my actual EV driving allowance down to now 9 kilowatts of the advertised 12 kilowatts, which was a new buyer surprise for me. 
So the battery is never fully discharged under normal use conditions, leading to other complications to discuss later. To understand the third important factor, imagine over time the barrel gets slightly shorter with each charging cycle. This in turn lowers the safe maximum charge level each time. The BMU is tasked with guessing the declining state of health. It is a very old piece of technology, which is believed to blindly enforce an unrealistically aggressive reduction at each charge. Over time, an artificial gap emerges between the actual state of health and the BMU's guessing. This distortion requires correction to recover valuable driving range. While a water barrel can't really get shorter, the analogy attempts to simulate the individual battery cells becoming charge imbalanced at different rates. So the job of the BMU is to protect the PHEV's 80 cells by not letting the pack accept more charge than the weakest individual can accommodate. Understanding these mechanisms brings us back to the opening screen of the Watchdog website and what is being compared. The vertical amp hour scale shows the height of our rain barrel mapped against the horizontal kilometer distance driven, which relates to the battery time and service. The individual circular plot points show our downloaded declining battery's health, SOH, compared against a theoretical P green degradation reference for all lithium batteries and against a thousand PHEV users worldwide. Click your circle data points or the green triangles of anonymous others to have exact kilometers driven and amp hour pairs displayed. This annotated chart has shown me the before and after impact of Mitsubishi service plan smoothing procedure, once at 35,000 kilometers and another at 49,000 kilometers. One mistake put my state of health near 40 amp hours as I was allowed to drive away. After the smoothing correction, the BMU guessing error seemed too aggressive. So, since we are being faced with healthy service charges, we need to understand what is being done to our dry battery and have the means to measure the results. Without access to the PHEV website, I would not likely have successfully negotiated for service repeat corrections. Next, we will review the steps to access your data at the website. Assuming you're signed up, let's get logged in with your username and your password. If you can't find your data in the graphic that shows up, you may not have uploaded it. Did you sync your data? And make sure your smartphone settings are correct. If you see any data, then zoom in and slide the image rightward. You can then move down the curve and see individual values highlighted. Here was my first smoothing procedure, which they performed correctly on the second attempt. Two years later, there was another scheduled smoothing procedure at another service shop. This one was presented to me with my state of health at nearly 40 amp hours and corrected on another attempt. Being able to identify abnormal behavior in your battery is a key benefit of the watchdog system, which includes catching service errors quickly. As these screens show, the community of users have recorded 2018 PHEV vehicles with distance traveled exceeding 250,000 kilometers. So far, we haven't left the opening screen. There are many other major reporting screens available through the menu system to touch on. But first, scroll down through the opening screens before I quickly tour the rest. Then check your profile information here and your vehicle information here, where there's a number of alternative PHEV models to choose from. This next menu item opens battery card data for you to tour. Here you have fellow PHEV owner rankings, and we've seen this FAQ area already. The next trip data menu presents your adventures in varied formats. They are under tabs for card format, by day, by week, by month and by year. Most cards can be clicked to present even more depth. Going into the details of all this information is beyond the scope of this video, so I am just quickly touching on each. And we'll leave it to you to explore further. And then the last tab presents several chart views. I will just scroll down through a few here. 
Some can even be interacted with to zoom in for more detail. Lastly, we'll explore the Mapper menu item. But before that, we need to revisit the settings area of the WatchDoc app on your smartphone. Touching the three dots at the top right of the display opens the system menu, where you'll click on the settings item. In the next screen, scroll down past the connection and location settings, as well as the data and logging settings to the database settings area. In the database settings area, ensure that you have the sync items checked, and then click on the back up to file item. You will get a backup to file success notice. You can ignore the items past this point for this purpose, but they're worth exploring sometime. The purpose of the backup was to update the trip folder in the PHEV watchdog directory stored in the download section of my smartphone. This folder will be backed up to my Windows computer for more processing. Now I can get back to selecting a trip file for the trip mapper function. Clicking select, a file explorer is opened on my Windows computer. I then navigate to where the backup trip files imported from my smartphone are stored. Looking in the PHEV watchdog directory, I select any trip file of type CSV, which the trip mapper knows how to process. Quite quickly, a map appears in the Watchdog Trip Mapper screen area, along with some optional selections. Beyond the scope of this video, there are image processing tools that can be used to annotate this map along with other interesting images of the trip, as shown in this example. Also, the CSV trip file can be imported into a spreadsheet for processing. For example, joining two or more trip files to map out a complete journey. The limit of the trip mapper function to deal with larger combined files is about one megabyte. I hope this video encouraged you to explore more of what the website side of the watchdog system has to offer. In closing, I'd like to thank Daniel Santos and his team for making this resource available to the PHEV community. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll be looking forward to preparing another one for you soon.